Welcome back to Close Up. The first in the nation primary in the larger Democratic race for president now has its front runner with Senator Bernie Sanders joining the fray. His revolution took the political establishment by surprise in 2016, but he ultimately fell short. But Sanders told us last week 2020 will be different. One thing that hasn't changed, though, is the importance of winning in New Hampshire. Thank you, New Hampshire. It was one of the biggest victories in first in the nation primary history. In 2016, Bernie Sanders blew out Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire. News 9 spoke with the Vermont senator as he launched his 2020 campaign Tuesday. And he says once again, the Granite State is crucial to his path to the White House. Well, it goes without saying that New Hampshire is enormously important. And I want to thank the people of New Hampshire uh, who in 2016 not only gave us a very strong victory, but show the American people that the ideas that we were fighting for, all of those ideas that I brought to New Hampshire three years ago, they were at that point considered radical and extreme. Well, the people in New Hampshire said differently. 2020 is not 2016. This time around, a large and growing field of diverse candidates are already building their campaigns here. But when we asked Sanders about the dynamics of this race, he noted that the ideas many candidates are running on, like publicly funded health care and elections, He's been touting for decades. Well, obviously, a race which has 10 or 15 people is a very different race than has one. Uh, I hope that the people of New Hampshire will take a look at my experience, uh, will take a look at how long uh, I have been fighting uh, for these ideas. These are not new ideas for me. Joining us now to unpack the Sanders announcement, my colleague and the dean of the New Hampshire Political Press Corps, John DeStaso. Good morning, Adam. How are you? Thanks for being here, John. So let's talk some pros and cons here. First off, what does Senator Sanders have going in his favor as he gets into this race? Well, in addition to the obvious of name recognition and being a neighbor and uh, having won the 2016 New Hampshire primary, he also has a core group of people who are, uh, from what I understand, committed right off, right off the beginning of this campaign. Uh, their challenge is going to be to kind of reach out to that, uh, to that group that may have not been totally excited about Sanders in 2016, but were just not about to vote for Hillary Clinton. But th the main advantage is that people know Bernie Sanders. People know what he stands for. De Democrats uh, view him uh, as sort of a, kind of the, the vanguard for some of the issues that the entire field is, is discussing now. So that, that's a plus for him, including that, that, that group that he the has. Core, yeah. Yeah. They always say you don't want to fight the last war. And in 2016 and 2015, the, the system is rigged, worked really well against Hillary Clinton. Do you think that'll have the same kind of sticking power on this diverse and younger field of Democratic candidates? No, I don't know that Bernie Sanders is going to have any ground to, to say the system is rigged this time. Because as a result of that uh, claim and admissions, uh, if you remember, in 2016 by officials of the DNC and emails that went out showing that the, the Democratic National Committee was sort of in the pocket of Hillary Clinton, there was an entire process beginning with a, uni a unity commission which came up with uh, changes to the rules. And I'm not going to belabor those, but, but the big one was uh, stripping the power of, of the superdelegates to the party elite. Plus, there's no, uh, perhaps with the exception of Joe Biden, there's not really anyone that that elite is going to be gravitating to with this very diverse field. The regional candidate issue. We've always seen in New Hampshire, the neighboring state candidates have done well, whether it's Vermont, Massachusetts, or Maine. Do you think that dynamic has changed at all over the years, particularly with social media? Say if you're a voter in Bosco, and it's possible through Twitter and Facebook mm -hmm. to follow Cory Booker or Kamala Harris and have a closer relationship mm -hmm. to them than, say, your senator from Vermont. Is that an issue? Sure. Well, I think it certainly helps all those uh, candidates that are not from New England. Now we'll see. This time we have, of course, Bernie Sanders and, and we have Elizabeth Warren who's on Friday spoke to a thousand uh, Democrats at the uh, Democratic Party's 100 Club dinner. Neighbors, people who have uh, helped the, the party, that would be Warren. Bernie has kind of gone his own way, Bernie Sanders. Uh, I still think there is something to be said about familiarity in terms of uh, having seen someone before and knowing they're a neighbor. But uh, from what I, as, as you and I both know, this the people who are paying attention right now, uh, most of them are just open to anyone and everyone, and we may see less of a, of a regional impact this time. The pressure is on those two to win the New Hampshire primary, especially on Bernie Sanders. Yeah, and especially, too, the question of age will be a big one. He'll be 78. Uh, that's older than Ronald Reagan was when he left the White House, so something to pay attention to. But, John, okay. thanks for your time. Absolutely. And we'll see you back here soon.